What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we've got the Dell Optiplex sitting out in front of me. Previously we just did a minor upgrade throwing in a very very minor upgrade a GPU in there that's very again as I say minor because it didn't require anything else other than us just slapping it right in there and calling it a gaming PC. But today as you can see we've got some serious upgrades that are going to be happening other than just a minor GPU slap in upgrade. We've got parts that we hunted down in a previous video that we're hopefully going to be turning this Dell Optiplex into a gaming power powerhouse let's go all right guys so today's real main focus is to obviously show you guys how you can upgrade a dell optiplex and what kind of gaming results you'll get out of it but keep it in mind some other things too we wanted to target doing something that was reasonable so not slapping in some kind of like massive crazy over the top gpu into a dell optiplex this thing is 10 years old so it will get cpu bottleneck pretty easily by most modern graphics cards and i'm sure we might run into a little bit of that with this graphics card that we're going to be putting into it but additionally what i also wanted to talk to you guys about is just the caveats that we'll run into while taking apart some of the OEM pieces of this Dell Optiplex and getting it upgrade ready. So we'll go through each thing individually as we get to that. But the first thing we got to do is start tearing this thing down. We've got to get out the power supply and we've got to get out the CPU and start making room for some of these upgrades. Okay, so what we're going to have to do here with the Dell Optiplex is to get it gamer ready. We'll go bit by bit. And the first thing I want to do is get this power supply off because it's not really going to work with anything else. We don't have any actual PCIe power delivery from this power supply and this power supply is extremely weak. We only have 290 watts available to us. That isn't going to Cut it when we're trying to put in some more modern gpu that doesn't require just pcie power like this one does so let's get this guy out of here so pretty simple when it comes to removing dell optiplex power supplies you've got four screws that hold it in kind of more standard as you would expect with any kind of computer case so let's get these zipped out of here now with the four screws removed from the power supply it's still in there and there's a trick to this that if you are not familiar with Dell Optiplex is there's actually a locking latch that hopefully the camera's picking up that is towards the back of the motherboard tray you want to just push in on to release it and it'll come loose. But before we do that, I want to pull off the power connections that we have kind of floating around the PC as it is right now. So probably a, a good first thing to do before actually doing what I did previously. So we're going to get this all those pulled off. And here we go, power supply should come on out. And as you guys can see, the power supply is extremely basic. Two connections coming off of it in total, so that's not gonna do too well as far as powering up a higher power GPU. So obviously, speaking of GPUs, we wanna get this out of here because we're not gonna be using that anymore. And if you don't recall how to do that, you just push in on this tab. It's the Optiplex locking tab, and kind of the OEM feature, and pull up on the PCIe tab slot, and out it should come. There we go. So the little baby GPU is out. All right, so we are well on our way, guys. So the next thing we gotta do is pull the cooler off of the CPU because we aren't gonna be using the CPU, the i5 that this came with. We're gonna be slapping in an i7-4790. And really kind of just like with any CPU cooler, it's just attached with some screws. But first let's get our power cable pulled off here for the fan, so that's okay. We will reuse this cooler. There's no, no reason why we can't. And let's get these screws started here. I might need a smaller screwdriver. Right back with the smaller screwdriver, we'll start just spinning off the screws here that hold it down to the motherboard and out the cooler should come. We'll get some new thermal paste and the new upgraded CPU installed. This will be a drop-in replacement. There's no BIOS updates or anything like that that needs to be done. We should be on our way quickly. All right. There we go. And the thermal paste is pretty dry. So if anything, we're getting a good reapplication of thermal paste because I really wonder how old that is. That is probably as old as the PC is itself. I, I wonder if that CPU has ever come out of there. So next thing to do is to get the CPU out. And so I don't bend any pins or do anything crazy. I'm going to tip the PC over on its back to get that sucker out. All right, so we do have a good shot of that now. So it's an Intel chip. So the bracket retention arm is all the kind of the same. Just pull up on that and it'll open and get a good grasp on the CPU before you pull it up, making sure that I am also getting a good grasp on it. I don't want to drop it back in there. There we go. Pretty dry thermal paste, not looking all that fantastic. That's not very good. 
All right, and here is the upgraded CPU. This is the i7-4790. This is basically the max CPU that you can shoot for with the Optiplex with some variations. Yes, you can go with the K version, but it's really not that worth it to get the extra little tiny bit of clock speeds when compared to price. Speaking of price, we paid only $40 for this CPU. So a heck of a drop in upgrade as it's gonna be. But the big thing that we're getting out of this is obviously clock speeds are gonna be a bit higher over the i5-4590, but also we're getting hyper threading. So we're gonna have eight logical cores it's definitely going to help speed things along and really be able to pump in those fps numbers with the games with the new gpu so let's drop this guy on in real simple we're just going to line up the triangle with the corresponding spot on the board which is down in the bottom left hand corner all right cpu is going on in lining up those notches and that triangle as mentioned all right she feels pretty secure and there gave it a little wiggle just to be sure pulling down the retention arm bracket and locking it in. CPU is now installed. So one part now officially upgraded. All right, so while we've got the PC laid over, let's go ahead and get some extra RAM installed. And what we got here is just a picked up a eight gig kit from eBay, spent about 20 bucks on this, I think even less, but we're just gonna basically populate the remaining slots here to give us a total of 16 gigs of RAM. That'll be good for our gaming situations. So let's open the retention arms here for the memory and just get these installed one by one. And on with the next one. And done. So now we need some new thermal paste for the CPU. Get that refreshed and get the cooler back on. All right, let's just give it a dab of thermal paste. Get that nicely refreshed. That'll be an upgrade in its own to get some new fresh thermal paste. All right, all set there. And let's get the cooler zipped on back down on the motherboard. Simple as just lining up the holes. There we go. And always in a diagonal fashion to make sure we've got even pressure. And before we forget, let's go ahead and get this power cable for the fan reinstalled, re-plugged in, I should say. There we go. All right, so next major part, and it's worth some discussion, is the power supply. So one thing, obviously, as we noted, that the stock power supply with the Dell Optiplex just will not cut it as far as powering on some upgrades, but also just simply doesn't even have the proper connectors to do so. So what we got here is a Thermaltake BM2 550 watt power supply. 550 watts will be plenty enough for a graphics card that we'll be installing into the system, which we'll get into the details when we get there. But also a main thing also being is if you want to be doing these types of upgrades, you want to try to target at least a minimum of a semi-modular power supply, which this one is. Uh, a fully modular would be even better. Both are not absolutely necessary, but they are helpful when you're working with limited space like within a Dell Optiplex. I got this power supply for about $55 brand new so we got a brand new power supply and it's a good rated tier C power supply which will be perfect for this type of application. So let's get this guy installed. All right, so this pretty much takes up near the same dimensions as the stock OEM power supply. It's a little bit larger, but we'll go in about the same exact process as the other one. We just have to kind of work our way around things here a little bit. So there's definitely one caveat I wasn't actually expecting to be a problem, so Gonna have to maybe go off camera a little bit to try to figure this out. Uh. So the issue that we're running into here is the latching system. It's just in our way. I think dimensionally wise, the power supply will get in there, but this is causing us to not be able to slide it into place. I didn't realize this power supply is slightly longer in depth than other higher wattage power supplies that I've thrown into Dell Optiplexes before. But anyway, got things a little bit disassembled at this point, but I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull the spring off the latching system and see if I can at least slide it out for now so I can get the power supply in and get that rolling and it looks like in order to do so i just got to pull back on this spring here it's pretty much impossible for me to capture this on video but i'm just taking some needle nose pliers and pulling that spring off and that lets the latching system free and it's just being bound by this little clip here i'm just going to push in on it all right we got it loose Let's see if i can just pull it out of here for now just need it out of my way there we go one eternity later. Alrighty, so we have the thermal take power supply in the chassis. 
And as you guys were seeing there, we had to actually remove the latching system that closes the side panel here. But basically the power supply was just a little bit too long by about like half an inch or so that wouldn't allow us to clear the structure of the latching system. So I had to remove it to get this in. Now, what that means basically is I'm choosing, and this is just my personal preference, I'm choosing to not run the latch. So what does that mean is when we take the side panel and we'll put that on here, and this is just gonna be a personal preference thing, guys. If the power supply is too large, where you have to remove the latch, then it's basically just the latching system won't really kind of lock it closed like it's normally designed to do. But here's an additional alternative if you're worried about that. Now, obviously you can see the side panel is staying closed, but maybe if the PC were to move around or something, it might come loose. Use the lock on the outside of the chassis to actually benefit you. So what you can do is maybe come by with a zip tie like so and really just zip it closed. That at least kind of keeps things closed to the point where it is slightly janky, I guess you could say, but it accomplishes the job of upgrading to a larger power supply to accommodate our graphics card. Now, some additional options. What you can do instead with the, the latching system, I've heard and I have not tested myself, is you can file down the back part of the latch that gives you that little bit of extra space to clear the whole latching system, reattach it, and then put in your larger power supply. Thirdly, what you can do is find a power supply that is smaller. So I'm gonna to try to put some links to things in the description that you can use that with the smaller power supply, like this Segotep here, this is a 600 watt gold power supply. The brand slash unit, I'm not sure it can be fully trusted, but the difference here is the fact that it's a smaller form factor. It's about a half inch to three quarters of an inch shorter in depth. As you can really see, it is smaller. And that allows for you to just slap it right on in. Because if you look at the dimensions of this power supply versus the Dell power supply, they are basically exactly the same in dimension. So the other one, the thermal take unit that I have in there, slightly longer, a better power supply. So this is my personal preference to go with that. Alrighty, so back to power supply caveats because we got a few more things to talk about, mainly to do with the 24 pin to basically what's gonna happen here when we try to plug it into the Dell Optiplex motherboard. So the Dell Optiplex motherboard only accepts eight pin power for the overall motherboard power. We've got an option with that, which is actually a really easy solution. These can be purchased on eBay and Amazon for anywhere between like five to $10. And it converts the 24 pin from a normal standard ATX power supply as we have here like so. So what we wanna do is we just wanna plug that in. There we go and basically plug in the eight pin side to the Dell Optiplex motherboard. There we go. So that is one thing you're definitely gonna have to do when it comes to a Dell Optiplex of this generation. The other caveat to it is it creates a lot of cable bulk, but it's pretty easy to get rid of that. You can use the space underneath the CD-ROM drive or DVD drive here. I'm using that space anyway to hide a lot of the cable bulk and it kind of comes handy because we got some other things to plug in as well. All right, so on the note of additional caveats while we still have the space, one other thing that you're gonna run into is the USB 3.0 cable. Because it is a large cable that stands quite a ways off the top of the motherboard, when we put in a larger GPU that's gonna come into and around about that space, this is gonna sit too tall off the top of the motherboard and cause it to basically bind with that GPU and not allow you to fully seat the GPU. However, there is a easy solution that isn't as involved as like the power supply, and that's as easy as getting one of these. This is a flexible, so we can see we've got a very flexible end of the USB 3.0 cable. This would be the end that goes into the motherboard, and this would be the end that that we would plug in the cable to. Now, one additional small caveat to that is the OEM style plug or cable has a little bit different structure than your normal USB cable that you would get from like a aftermarket case or something of that nature. So the difference here being is the notched end of the cable is larger. So it's made to specifically plug into a Dell Optiplex. When you normally get one of these cables, it's a very, it, the form factor is very much smaller to meet the, your nor, normal standard USB cable, but that's easily circumventable is so long as you do what I've done here. Now it does look a little bit on the janky side. However, all I did was just kind of Dremel out and you can even probably use like a pocket knife. You just gotta be really careful around the pins, but Dremel out an area that allows you to easily plug the cable in like so. If that were to be of normal size, then we would be running into an issue and we would not be able to plug in the Dell Optiplex cable very successfully. One 
additional small tiny caveat to doing this is that this is pretty loose. So get you some electrical tape and wrap it around that so that way this holds together nice. Then what you can do is easily plug it into the Dell Optiplex motherboard side like we are doing so here and allows you to almost flatten the cable to a point where you can get your GPU in there. That is just something to be aware of. Now, if you don't care about the front USB, you can just disconnect it and throw the cable aside. I know I don't really use a whole lot of front USB. That is purely another preference thing for you guys. Alrighty, so on with some more caveats since we're getting into now talking about the graphics card. So what we got here is an RX 6600 XT that I got off of eBay for about $190, a really solid buy. Basically what I was targeting is trying to get the maximum GPU that was balanced enough with the Optiplex that wouldn't be too crazy. So nothing like a 4000 series GPU and anything like that. Something that should work well with our CPU that we upgraded. But the problem we have with Dell Optiplexes are the placement of the RAM that is on the motherboard in accordance to the PCIe slot. As you guys can see, they basically run parallel with each other. So putting in a large GPU, as we already know, the USB 3.0 is going to be an issue, but getting it underneath the RAM slots is going to be somewhat of a challenge as well. And let me demonstrate. So as we go to slot in this GPU, we're going to see that we are very, and get this cable out of the way. We are very tight on the clearance of the memory here, extremely tight. They're basically touching each other. But the trick here is, and this will still work because we don't have a GPU that has a really tall standing backplate is to kind of come in at an angle. So kind of point the PCIe fingers towards the PCIe slot, kind of get that lined up and then kind of push back towards the motherboard and up and, and support yourself with your hand on the back of the PC and just give it a firm push. So that will get it in. But as you guys can see there, they are literally touching each other. So again, as mentioned, if your backplate isn't more of a decorative one like this and actually has some girth to it, you probably are gonna run into some issues with height and you might actually have to remove it. This is a good card to use. This is the Hellhound RX 6600 XT. And another good thing about it is it meets our length requirements. So we don't have to remove the drive bay. We can slot it right in. It's a dual fan card. It's a perfect fit for a Dell Optiplex. And the last caveat, trust me when I say it, this is the last one, is the latching system for a small form factor GPU that sits here on the back side of the Optiplex. This simply will not close because the size and depth of the graphics card coming out more towards the front of the case. We can't even get the sucker closed. This is a really actual easy fix. These things do come off easily. So what we wanna do is just push back or towards the, the top and bottom of it. And as you can see, it just kind of fell apart right there on me. And what that does is it allows you to take the latching system apart. This just snaps together normally like so. That is just for, like I said, something that is more OEM style. Obviously our GPU is way too big to use something like this, but we can easily remove it. The only, I guess, extra caveat is it leaves a little bit of a air gap here for the GPU, but that actually might be beneficial at least for introducing nice fresh air. It may not be so useful for dust, so you might have to clean it out more regularly. Alrighty guys, everything is assembled. This is gonna be flat out just a post and boot test to see if everything that we put in there actually translates to an operational PC. So three, two, one, see how she does. I'm gonna leave this uncut. We're gonna see if we get a strong, perfect boot, which looks like we got some activity. All right, so there's our Dell sign and I actually already see the windows logo spinning. I've just got one of my pre-installed SSDs with an OS on it. That was actually really quick. Uh, very quick, actually. That's first boot up and we even got a little error messages coming up on my portable monitor here. So it's got a little speaker on it, but check that out. Everything is working perfectly given all the little minor caveats that we had to deal with, but I'd say that's pretty sweet considering all the stuff that we went through. So at this point, guys, this wraps up this video. This video, I understand, kind of went on long in terms of trying to explain all the caveats that you would go through in terms of a Dell Optiplex upgrade, some serious upgrades, not just a drop in GPU, but something that can really make for a really good gaming experience. If you're not sure where we've been, up to date with this Optiplex. I've got a couple of videos right here for you that show where we've come along so far with this Dell Optiplex. Stay tuned to an upcoming video where we're gonna put this thing through a full gambit of benchmarks and see what it really can do. Thanks for tuning into this one though, guys. I appreciate your time and I will catch you in the next one.